Gauss's law, in integral form, is the equation that the flux of an electric field on a closed surface equals the net charge inside that surface over epsilon naught. In this case, the enclosed charge is Q1 plus Q3. When you think about it, it's actually quite impressive that the flux always evaluates to Q enclosed over epsilon naught, no matter how complicated the surface is. Think about how difficult solving that integral would be, even for just one point charge. How could one simplify all of this to simply Q over epsilon naught? Well, there's actually a really simple derivation of Gauss's law that doesn't involve any crazy integrals. It's the one that uses the divergence theorem and the divergence of the electric field of a point charge. However, I did not learn about this derivation until recently, so I derived Gauss's law by actually simplifying the flux integral. At the start of tackling this problem, I knew that starting off with the actual equation would be too difficult, so I decided to try to work with its 2D version for a single point charge at the origin and then hope that the result can analogously transfer to the actual equation. Unfortunately, I won't show you the derivation for the 3D version in this video, but I might make a future video for that, and I still find the 2D version to be very interesting anyways. In 3D, the magnitude of the electric field E of a point charge is directly proportional to 1 over the surface area of a sphere, which is 2 tau r squared. But in 2D, the magnitude of E is directly proportional to 1 over the perimeter of a circle, which is tau r. The analogous closed surface is now a closed line expressed as the position vector s of a parameter t from t0 to t1, where s of t0 equals s of t1. This is the expression of a general flux integral in 2D. I will be integrating counterclockwise, so the normal vector will always be the unit tangent vector of s, rotated 90 degrees clockwise. DL can be replaced with this term times DT, and then that term cancels out. Since the electric field is a radial force, it points in the same direction as the position vector. Therefore, the electric field equals its magnitude times the unit position vector. For the integral, the needed position vectors are all of the vectors from S. After some more simplifying, The integral is this. Knowing that this integral equals q over epsilon naught, I can cancel out the q over epsilon naughts on both sides and multiply over the tau. Now I need to simplify the integral to a function that equals tau for closed lines that contain the origin and zero for closed lines that don't contain the origin, which is when the closed line doesn't contain the point charge. The problem is, what would such a function look like? How does one even mathematically define a closed line containing the origin? The only thing that I could do now is to try to analytically solve the integral and hope that it gives me an answer that I'd be satisfied with. The first thing I notice is that the numerator of the integrand looks like the numerator of the quotient rule. The only thing that's missing is an x squared in the denominator. So I'll put an x squared in the denominator and make up for it by putting an x squared in the numerator. Whenever I see y over x, I think of tangent, so I'll try something in polar coordinates. This actually simplifies the integrand a lot. I end up with theta of t1, which I call theta1, minus theta of t0, which I call theta0. At first, it seems like this result should just equal 0, since s of t0 and s of t1 are the same. How could the integral possibly equal tau? To answer this, I'll explain the visual interpretation of this expression. I'll start with a closed line containing the origin. I'll track the angle of s of t starting from t0 to t1. Notice that the angle increases to where the difference of theta1 and theta0 is tau. This difference is also the simplified integral I got earlier. Now I'll do the same thing for a closed line not containing the origin. Notice that the angle eventually goes back to theta0. Now the angle difference equals 0. Even for a more complicated closed line like this, the angle always goes back to the starting angle and makes the angle difference equal zero. Here are some more examples of both cases.
Basically, the final angle, theta 1, is quite literally the final angle, and it changes by tau from the starting angle if the closed line contains the origin, and changes by zero if not, which is amazing. I never expected that tracking the angle of the closed line can determine if it contains the origin. It's also nice that the result of the integral, theta 1 minus theta naught, is so simple and clean compared to what it used to be. Now that the 2D equation is derived for one point charge, I can derive the version for n number of point charges that can be anywhere on the plane. First, starting with the flux integral, I'll write out the net electric field as the sum of different point charge electric fields. Then I'll distribute everything else onto each E. Now I have the sum of the flux for each point charge. Note that in this visualization, I'll make all of the point chargers labeled between 2 and n-1 outside of the closed line, and not shown on the screen, to keep the visualization clean. Next, I'll rewrite the integrals as the angle differences times their constants. But the angles can't be from the origin, since not all of the point chargers are on the origin. I can fix this by calculating each angle difference on its own, treating its corresponding point charge as the origin. The point chargers that are in the closed line correspond to a tau, and the point chargers that are out of the closed line correspond to a zero. All of the other point chargers not shown thus also correspond to a zero. After some simplifying, I end up with the enclosed charge over epsilon naught. Now the 2D version of Gauss's law is proven. Now that Gauss's law is proven, I would like to show something else I found about the flux integral. When I think of the 2D plane and an angle from the positive x-axis, I think of complex numbers. Also, I noticed that the numerator of the integrand has an x and y term subtracted by another x and y term. This led me to think that this numerator could be the real or imaginary part of complex multiplication. I first tried multiplying x plus yi and x prime plus y prime i. However, the closest thing I got was y prime x plus x prime y in the imaginary part. Then I tried x minus y i instead, and got y prime x minus x prime y. Although it worked, I found it to be a little ugly due to that minus sign. But then I looked out of the numerator and found an x squared plus y squared in the denominator, and realized that this new integrand could simplify to something really clean. The denominator could be factored into this. Then the x minus yi is cancelled, and I was left with x plus yi prime over x plus yi. This could be rewritten as the t derivative of ln of x plus yi. Now the integral could cancel with the t derivative, resulting in this. The x plus yi's could be rewritten in polar form. After some more simplifying, I got this. The imaginary part is the angle difference from the 2D version of Gauss's law. For the real part, since R0 and R1 are the same, the real part equals zero. However, it is possible for R0 and R1 to be different for a closed line, as long as S0 and S1 are collinear with a point charge. This is because a straight line segment can connect the two endpoints and form a closed line. Back to when the integral looked like this, notice that the real part is a dot product, and the imaginary part is a cross product, between s and s prime. For those who know some geometric algebra, you may realize that if I rewrite the imaginary parts as a wedge product, the numerator can be rewritten as the geometric product of the two vectors. And in general, a flux integral of any vector field f will always be the bivector component of the integral of the geometric product of f and the unit tangent vector. But what's more interesting is how subbing f for e results in this. I'll have to try something like this for the 3D equation and see if I find anything good.